I would like to discuss a paper that we have just recently published. Uh, this is in the field of patients who presented with sev uh, significant severe aortic regurgitation and who underwent aortic valve surgery at the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, this was a study of about 865 patients who underwent AVR, uh, uh, aortic valve surgery. Most of them underwent aortic valve replacement. Some of them also had aortic valve repair. So what we wanted to look at was, what was their baseline ejection fraction? What was their baseline strain values? And how these played out in the long run in terms of prognosis, but more importantly, what was the recovery of their cardiac function? A lot of, all of us know that after you relieve, uh, aortic valve regurgitation is a state of chronic volume overload. And once you relieve the AR by uh, doing valve surgery, often the ejection fraction drops, uh, at least for a short period of time, and then it subsequently recovers. Uh, we wanted to see, we wanted to understand this dynamics not only from an ejection fraction perspective, but also how does strain, uh, LV strain behave in this situation. So this, were, this was a study of 865 patients. We measured baseline strain in all these patients, baseline echocardiogram in all these patients. So the first story is uh, at baseline, strain was abnormal in, in a significant proportion of patients, almost 56% of patients at baseline had an abnormal strain of which we define as negative 19% in an aortic regurgitation uh, population. This was in spite of their mean resting ejection fraction of 57%, meaning despite having a preserved ejection fraction, uh, their baseline strain was significantly abnormal in about 56% patients. Uh, then they underwent surgery, and one of the important things we found was during long-term follow-up, strain was an independent predictor of, baseline strain was an independent predictor of uh, uh, longer-term outcomes. The important crux of this paper was that about 285 of these patients came back to the Cleveland Clinic for a follow-up testing. Uh, a lot of our patients come from all over the world, so not all of them get to come back to Cleveland Clinic for a short-term follow-up, but 285 did, and we had their echocardiograms measured at between three and 12 months post-operatively. Uh, what we found was that in these patients, 91% of these patients had a preserved ejection fraction. So their EF may have dropped, but it recovered in 91% of patients. However, however, in about thir only 31% patients, the strain values at that time were better than negative 19%. So what we are able to show is that there was a lag between uh, recovery of ejection fraction and strain. More importantly, in this subgroup, what we were able to show is that uh, n if the strain values don't improve, that is associated with longer term mortality. Uh, and if your strain values do not improve by five, per uh, by five absolute points during this time frame, that was also another a factor associated with longer term mortality. So in summary, uh, all this is pointing towards are we potentially operating a little bit too late uh, in patients with aortic regurgitation? Should we be looking at sensitive markers beyond ejection fraction and symptoms to uh, time uh, aortic valve replacement uh, or aortic valve repair in patients with significant aortic regurgitation?